Well, <clears throat> I'm going to recap by asking you questions. And you can respond. That means you give me an answer. What did man lose in the fall? Dominion, exactly. He fell from dominion. He did not fall from heaven. He fell from dominion. So who is the divine connector? Y'all got that one quick. Okay, the Holy Spirit. All right. Is this true or false? The church is the executive branch of the kingdom of heaven. It's false. It's the legislative. All right, now see, that's why you recap. Because now if you didn't put in your notes right, that's why you answered wrong. The church is the legislative branch of the kingdom of heaven. Now, what is the church assignment? <laughs> to govern, to rule, to control, to master and have authority over the earth on behalf of the kingdom of heaven. Mm. Now, with that authority given to the church, what can the church do in the earth? What do you say? Exactly. Somebody got it. To make laws, declare war, regulate commerce, domestic and foreign, control taxing and spending policies. So we got more to say in the earth than the devil has allowed you to believe. We have everything, say everything, to say about what's happening in our nation and in the earth, domestic and foreign. We, the believer, have control over these things. But it's been taught so long that our dominion has been so diminished, we don't even reach for it. But I'm here to train you to reach for it. Use it. And I have said again, I am convinced that the more we know about the kingdom of heaven, the easier it is to understand the Bible. And the less fear will have a hold of you. Because the king inside of you will start dispelling the fear. Hallelujah. All right. <clears throat> God knew and recognized that the number one need of mankind was not religion, not Christianity, but a government. How many of you realize that a child that grows without established government in the home, that child will get older but be imbalanced? See, that child will be imbalanced in their perspective about life. They're going to have a lopsided view about life. They're going to expect some things to come unto them that they are not qualified for. And they're not going to assume responsibility for their lives. That's what happens when children are raised incorrectly. Mm. So, and they will end up being selfish and disrespectful. And have a difficult time working with any established order. Well, see, that's what the government now is trying to do to your children in school, is to create a culture where they no longer regard order. And that's so they can be destroyed early. Mm. Now, this was the condition of mankind after the fall. But the problem is that what we see, now you're going to learn something today, so I'm going to learn something today. Look at your neighbor and say, you better learn too. This was the condition of mankind after the fall. But the problem is that God has now, the devil has established an alternative government that simulates the real. Are you ready for this one? This is called religion. It is the other government given unto man. This is why it's so diabolical, because it is the government of the kingdom of darkness. Mm -hmm. 
and it has crept into all areas of living. And it doesn't matter what you call it, is if it's not the real kingdom of heaven, it is religion. I don't care what tag you put on it. I don't care if it's Buddha. I don't care what name you call it. It is religion. Because that's the government that the devil operates through. Mm. So when God decided to do something, the devil had already begun to set up his uh, government. So for generations after generation after generation, all the way down to us, we see religion establishing its government in the earth. Mm. Do you realize that religion is 95% the source of all problems that we have in the earth? Ooh, Jesus. Oh, yeah. You may just, hey, don't turn me off. I'm telling you the truth. Almost every war that's ever been fought in this land on this earth has been about religion. One man fighting over somebody else's belief. Mm. It has been said that religion would be the great conflict of the 21st century. Are we seeing this play out? Just listen to the news. It, they, they said they, they want to take over the territory. Why? Because that's what their religion tells them they need to do. And as Christians, if we were just as dogmatic, for lack of a better term, as they are in producing for their religion, We can take back this earth, people. We've been commanded to do it. Since Adam's rebellion against God, where Adam handed over to Satan the government or rule of the earth, Adam had been given dominion by his father God, right? Adam gave his dominion over the earth to his father's enemy. Now, that must have really hurt God a, a lot. See, God has feelings. That's why you got feelings. He utilizes them correctly, but God has feelings. Because what Adam did went all the way up to the hierarchy of heaven. That's why blood had to cover all the utensils again. Because it had impacted the kingdom of heaven. This act of high treason also meant that the spirit of God who is the Holy Spirit, could no longer stay in the earth. He had to vacate the earth. The divine connector had to leave. Woo, Jesus. Mankind lost all fellowship communication with his father and creator. Now, that's a terrible place to be. If you're a parent and your children don't call you, that's a, that's a tough spot to be in when you are a loving, caring parent. If you've never been there, then you don't understand what God must have felt to know he got children that he loved and he can't talk to them. Not that he wouldn't, he can't. See, you never thought about it like that. Because God could not violate what he set up. Oh, man. Now, the devil has legal, say legal, usage of the earth. Adam gave him the government. And what's the government? The government was designed to be used on this earth, not in heaven. This government is for this earth. So Adam gave the devil the legal right to use the earth any way the devil saw fit. So the devil set up his kingdom in the second heaven and began to demand, said demand, servanthood from man by using fear. It was no longer love that caused 
servanthood, but now it's being ruled by fear. Man is being ruled and dominated by fear. And look how a tactician the devil has been, because now he's gripping people that say they love the Lord with fear. It used to where the sinners was more fearful than the church people. But today, church people are equal as fear as the sinners. Yeah, it's terrible. Now, Adam and all mankind that will come out of Adam and all the earth, say all the earth, because that just didn't limit to mankind. The earth was involved because the whole thing was about the earth. And all the earth came up under a new authority. Look at Romans chapter 6, verse 15. Romans chapter 6, verse 15. When you have it, say, I have it. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law but under grace? God forbid. In other words, he was, he was, uh, Apostle Paul was sharing with them, showing this analogy. Because when Adam fell, there was no law left to govern them that showed them their sin. And he's saying because there's no law, you're going to just sin just because you can? He said, God forbid, because now by the time Paul is on the scene, we know there's a new law in town, but we're not there yet. I want to show you that this law, he says, uh, under the law, under the law. We are not under the law, he says. Shall we sin because we are not under the law? He's talking to the believers now. Shall we act like those who are not with God? He says, God forbid. Know ye not that to whom you yield yourself servants to obey, his servants you are to whom you obey. So when Adam yielded, he became a servant unto the devil. He transferred his lineage and became a servant unto the devil. In verse 16, I want to read this out another translation for you. It says, don't you realize that grace frees you to choose your own master, but choose carefully. For you surrender yourself to become a servant bound to the one you choose to obey. If you choose to love sin, it will become your master, and it will own you and reward you with death. But if you choose to love and obey God, he will lead you into perfect righteousness. See, what Jesus did, he gave us back a choice. Say a choice. This is how Adam could make the choice he did, because they were not robots. And God gave us back our choice. Now, you still got to choose right. He said, choose, right? All right. Look at Joshua 24, verse 15. And it just makes it just a little bit clearer. Joshua 24, verse 15. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, in other words, you got a problem with serving the Lord. Choose you this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we choose the Lord. See, the choice is still yours. Look at Deuteronomy 30, verse 19. I, I want you to, I'm making it clear because you need to know the decision you're making today to live or not to live for God is totally up to you. But don't blame God for when bad stuff happened in your life. It's a choice you made. Deuteronomy 30, verse 19. And this is God talking. I call heaven and earth, heaven and earth, to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death, Blessing and cursing, therefore choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. Hmm. One translation said, I gave you the choice today between life and death, between being blessed or being cursed. Choose life so that you and your descendants may live. So the answer to earth's problem 
is the kingdom of heaven's government. Not, not, a, not a religious organization, but the government of God. Mm. Can you see that? Now, bring it up to date. We now have two kingdoms in the earth. You got the government of heaven, and you got the government of the devil. That's that parallel law. They are running simultaneously. Mm. This is called spiritual warfare. Because they were never designed to overlap, get together, agree about nothing. Because everything each kingdom does is totally opposite of the other. You can never get the kingdom of heaven to agree with anything in religion. Mm. Religion is an empty shell with no power. So the governments are constantly warring against the other. Can't you see that? Can't you see that vision? There's two governments trying to run in the same space. Putting a demand on, on the same people. And it, it is left up to the people to decide. You got it? Okay. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3. I know my son getting him some notes now. <laughs> I love my son. <laughs> we always laugh and joke with one another about teaching. Huh? <laughs> okay, he said, don't tell him about it. I'm stealing your notes. Okay. All right, he's he going to use my notes. Okay, we'll use a better term. It's okay. It's all good. Because, look, repeat is good, isn't it? Because the way God will use him to say it, you'll get it a different way. And, but it's still the same word. Amen? Amen? That's why he and I always laugh and joke because I love him. Because I'm glad that God is using him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. There's never been any jealousy between him and I. So y'all just know that. We are, we, are on the, we are on the same page. Glory to God. Are you at 2 Corinthians chapter 10? Look at verse 3. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. Now that makes more sense to you now, don't it? Because there is a flesh that we are dwelling in as a spirit being. And that flesh is what the devil always attacks. Because he can't get to you, the spirit. So your flesh is always under warfare. But he said, don't fight like you just only in the flesh. Because this is not a flesh war. It's spiritual. It's a spiritual fight. For the weapons of our warfare are not fleshy. That's what kind of means. It's not flesh rude, but mighty through God to the pulling down the strongholds. The weapons that we have been given are designed to pull down, crush, overthrow strongholds. What are those strongholds? The things that the devil used to ensnare and trap you. They are strongholds. They are called lineage curses. They are called iniquities. Things that you automatically seemingly do with no conscience about them. Those are strongholds that's passed down from generation to generation. They're strongholds. People got a certain way of thinking. And you keep saying, well, why do they think? Because that's, that's a stronghold in the family. This is why you have to take your kingdom authority and use it. Because verse 5 tells us what we do with this weapon that we've been, these weapons we've been given. Casting down imagination, you've got to go against your, the grain of your thinking. This is why Romans 12, 1 and 2 is so important. We must renew our mind. Because if you don't fix your mind, there is nothing else God can do with you. 
That is the first entry level of development. You have to take dominion over the way you think. Why? Because your thoughts going to rule this flesh. You know, I was walking outside uh, the other day with somebody, and I was telling them, I said, pump your arms as you walk. I said, because if you don't pump your arms and you just hang them down, you're telling your heart to slow down. You're actually commanding the body to, to get it almost in a cool down mode. I said, but we too far, we, we got too far to go. And then she looked at me and said, well, I said, pump those arms or just I'm gonna I'm gonna leave you. <laughs> I'm gonna walk in front of you. Why? Because I know that this is a command. Your heart means because I'm swinging my arms, my heart is working along with my movement. But if I relax them, my heart goes into relaxing. So you do tell your body what to do. Okay. It says, everything, casting down imaginations and everything, every high thing, every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge or the light of God. Knowledge in Hebrew means light. Darkness in Hebrew means ignorance. It says, bring light into this place and pull it down. Take the light and bring it into captivity, every thought to the obedience of Christ. And having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when obedience is fulfilled. So what is it saying to me? It's saying to me that I'm supposed to always be in a war position. Because thoughts are always coming against me. Thoughts are always coming at me. I'm not supposed to be off post. Because I know I got an adversary. I'm living in a two-government environment. And they're both vying for my body. I'm not supposed to act like there is nothing else out there but me. No, you're supposed to stay in a ready mode. I remember listening to uh, Mark Hankins, and he was saying, he was talking about the, the big dog and the little dog. And the guy said he kept trying to figure out why the little dog went back down. But he said the little dog was always ready to fight. Your dog got to get, get set, ready to go. And by the time the big dog got ready, the little dog already beat him up. Because it was always in a mode. A fight. <laughs> Ooh, Jesus. So we, are, we have to already be in a war mode against our enemy. Why? Because he's the enemy of the kingdom of our father. He's the enemy of it. And he's going against our father and the kingdom that we've been established to protect in this earth. To uphold. And not only that, but as we do that, we are doing what? Taking territory for the kingdom of heaven. Now, to effectively win against our enemy, Jesus said that he would give us keys. Say keys. Now, keys, <laughs> Lord, help us, Jesus, are laws, principles, and rules that govern both earth and the heavenlies. Ooh, Jesus. Jesus said, let's look at Matthew 16, verse 18. Let's read what Jesus said so people can see it for themselves. Matthew 16, verse 18. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock, what rock? The rock of revelation. I will build my church the revelation of the anointing, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Now, go back up there to where, and he says, I'm going to give you keys. But let's go back up to where it talk about gates. Because how many of you read this and you never understood what that meant? Be real. You read it, but you still didn't get no understanding from it. That's why you got a pastor. You belong, you need to belong to a church. 
Cause, and those of you that's praying for a door of utterance for me, I greatly appreciate it. I sensed it on yesterday. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Gates are barriers put up by your opposer. Gates are not like a swinging gate to your fence in your yard. And your gate, your fence is actually a barrier. So you can look at it that way if you want to. It's a, it's a pretty decent example. But gates are actually barriers put up by the devil. The opposition of, or the tactics, or the tricks. One scripture calls it fiery dots. These are things that the devil used that are called gates. Because they're barriers. They're trying to put up barriers. Why? You know, in the world, when we was coming, I don't know what they say today. We, say, we used to say smoke screen. Ain't nothing but a smoke screen. Why? That's a barrier to keep you from seeing clearly. So when you read it again, and the barriers of hell shall not prevail. That word prevail is a powerful word. The, the Bible, Jesus said, the barriers of hell shall not prove to be more powerful than the kingdom of heaven. Oh, glory to God. He said, they'll never be victorious over, win over, rule over you, succeed over you, conquer you, or master you. I don't care what trick, what fiery dot, what barrier he has placed in your road. The Bible says, Jesus said, he guaranteed with his life that it cannot overthrow, conquer, master, prove to be more powerful than the revelation of who's living inside of you. Ooh, Jesus. Look at Ephesians 6, 16. Ephesians 6. Verse 16. Are you learning? Are you okay? Verse 16. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewithal you shall be able to quench all the what? All the fiery dots. See? That's something the devil using to attack you. To prevent you from pushing back against his kingdom. And if he can slow you down, he will. And, and what he's done in the last five, ten years is create a lot of sickness and health in the bodies of believers. Now, we helped them a little bit because we didn't take care of ourselves sometimes. Let's tell the truth. Tell the whole truth. As Brother Marshall can say, tell the whole truth and shame the devil. <laughs> we aided him not understanding that we were aiding the devil. But even in that position, the word of God is more powerful than what the devil has put against you. Ooh, Jesus. Because it can redo and refurbish and renew your body and bring back to life again what the devil has taken away from you. He says that whatever the devil tries to use against you shall not conquer you. But if you don't know that, you'll give way to it. You'll lay down and let the devil walk on you like a carpet. And think sickness because you're a certain age, you're just supposed to be sick. If you're not careful, you say, I said, but you know, my mind not as sharp as it used to be. Why is not? Is that your confession? You going dull on us? I can't remember like I used to remember. Why? You can't find that in the kingdom of heaven. It's not in your government. It's not in our constitution. We got examples in the Bible. The Bible says Moses was 120 years old. His eyes were not dim nor obey. There, there's Joshua and Caleb. I mean, at 80-some years old, he asking to climb a mountain. Give me my mountain. Give me my possession. He wasn't slowing down. See, it's what we've been trained by the system of the devil called religion to expect that when I get past a certain age, I'm supposed to start dying. 
And then we'll settle our hind parts down in a chair and begin to accept decrepitness. And we won't fight to live on behalf of the kingdom. And not realize that you are surrendering your dominion just like Adam did. You're giving up your authority, your voice in the earth, because you are acknowledging the government of religion. Because religion says, okay, now you pass 50. You can't be like that. Mm -hmm. You got to slow down a little bit. You know, your body ain't. You know, you can't get up as swift as you used to. Well, do something. Do what you can do. Get as fast as you can get. How about that? Don't acknowledge anything from the kingdom of religion. Ooh, Jesus. I know this is going to hurt a few people, but I'm telling you, you got to get hurt to be healed sometime. Because when you got an injured a fracture that sometimes they, they got to break the bone to set it <laughs> so it can heal right. So don't pay your feelings in, in attention. Hear this word. And it says, because we do have fiery dots coming at us. And one translation saying, every battle take faith as your wrap around shield. For it is able to extinguish the blazing arrows coming at you from the devil. So we see. Now let's see how the word prevailed. Look at Acts 19.20. Because now we see that the enemy come against us. But we, in verse 7 we hear this scripture read about the church prevailing. Acts 19 verse 20. Acts 19 verse 20. Are you still learning? Glory to God. And so mightily grew the word of God and did what? Prevailed. <laughs> Woo, Jesus. In other words, the word began to spread and it began to push and overthrow and master the kingdom of religion and bring it under his feet. This is why people could get born again so easy because the disciples understood kingdom we don't have to do a lot of as my mama said gyration I, I, you know we still figuring out exactly what it means but you know they would say gyration you don't have to do all the things that we have gotten ourselves accustomed to do when you understand kingdom In fact, you only had to pray for yourself at all. Oh, I know. But that's, that's 95% of most Christians' prayer. They're praying for themselves. No, you pray in tongues to build you up. <laughs> and then you turn around and speak to whatever's coming against you. You ain't supposed to be doing a whole lot of praying for circumstances. You're supposed to be talking to them. That's why they'll never move. Now, when you get full of the Holy Ghost, you can speak to that circumstance, and it'll change. And you say, well, it didn't change yesterday. Okay, that's because you're looking at it with your fleshly eyes. By faith, it's already done. And I'm not saying anything different. It's already done. Can I get an amen? So the word grew, it spread, and it began to, and it says, the church, which is the ruling government in the earth, is to be victorious and prove to be more powerful than the opposing government. That's what it's supposed to do. But if we don't take up our dominion and connect it with our kingdom assignment, <sighs> mm. man, I tell you, this thing is getting deeper and deeper. The more I study, it gets deeper and deeper. Now, keys are for opening something that is locked up from you or locking something up 
that has been released against you. Keys are not just so you can say, I have a key. How many of you got car keys in here? Well, when you go to your car, do you stand there and say, I got a car key? Let's see if that's going to get you down the street just saying, I got a car key. Well, how long have we been saying we got keys to the kingdom? And you didn't bit more know what that meant. <laughs> but keys are designed. These, remember, what, what are keys? They are laws and principles. They are laws and principles and rules that govern. That's what a key is. Your car key governs your car. And it's designed to fit nobody else's car but yours. That's why you, everybody can't use the same key for everything. That's why he gave us keys, not key. Now, there is one key that you must have in order to initiate the keys. Mm. Ah, Jesus. Romans 5, 19 verse through 21. I'm going to show you one key, then we're going to close in just a little bit because I don't want to overload you today. Romans 5, verse 19. For as by one man's disobedience, disobedience, many were made sinners. So by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Moreover, the law entered that the office might be abound, might abound, but where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. I want to talk about that too, but not, uh, I'll get to it. That as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. Now that word abound there means to thrive, to flourish, to be in abundance, overflow with, to be stuffed with. The earth was stuffed with sin. It was overrun with sin. But the Bible says where sin abound, grace much more abound. So Adam's disobedience opened the door. See, his disobedience turned a key. It unlocked a door to mankind that never should have been open. You got to hear this. Adam's disobedience unlocked the door for all mankind to become sinners. That was a key. Say, but. Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection was a major key. In this one righteous act, Jesus unlocked, say unlocked, the door for all mankind to have the choice to be right with God again. Because remember, it's still your choice. He brought back the freedom for you to choose. Because he's never going to decide. See, the devil doesn't give you a choice. God does. Only God gives you a choice. The devil doesn't give you a choice. You either serve him or he don't want nothing to do with you. He becomes your art enemy when you won't serve him. Kind of like when people don't want, they don't like you, and if they can't use you, then they, they're going to try to destroy you. That's what the devil does. See, they got that from their, okay, they got it from their father. So Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection was a key to open the door for all mankind to have the choice to be right with God again. So we have to choose the government we will live under. So we see that Adam and all of mankind was to be uh, a, 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 a part of a government that ruled and reigned over planet earth on behalf of heaven. This was and is the purpose, say purpose, a man. was to rule and reign over the earth. Now we've got purpose. Assignment is different from purpose. 
because your assignment may not be my assignment, the way that gets done. But the purpose for man was to rule and reign over the earth on behalf of the kingdom of heaven. Why am I here? I just told you. You don't have to ask that one no more. See how smart you are? Half of your life just got answered. God needed a ruling body that would put the earth back in order. The garden was beautiful and laid out for them, but they were to rebuild what Satan had destroyed. Satan had destroyed the earth because he got mad. See, he, in that second heaven, he, they, they were supposed to go from that realm to earth on behalf of mankind because they're servants. They're ministering servants. Didn't you read that in your word? The angels are ministering servants unto man. And they were there, they were set up in that second heaven to be ministers on our behalf. So we needed something done. Go do this and go do that. Go get that. But the devil took control of it because Adam gave it to him. And now he's become an opposer and a resistor. And in order to get something from the, the kingdom where God lives down into the earth, now we have a fight. To get it. You need to know better about your Bible. Lord Jesus, help us. This is why we got to teach kingdom. Because kingdom bring us back into our right perspective. Hallelujah. So, so they were there. They were there. They were told, take over this earth and rebuild it. Because the devil was mad. So that's why when we when our listening to Pastor DJ read Genesis 1, verse 1 and 2. In the beginning was God. And God created the heaven and the earth. But then you look at verse 2 and it said, but the earth was void and without form. What happened? Because God doesn't create ugliness. You can't have verse 1 and then all of a sudden it looks like it's topsy-turvy. No, that's because the devil got angry. Because the devil had control over the usage of the earth. And he doesn't make anything pretty unless it's for deception. He makes everything y'all see out there in that world glamorous. Why do you think it's so easy for the sinner to get the money versus you to get rich? <laughs> because we don't use our dominion. He's using what he got left. And that's deception. That's all he can do. He's deceiving people with the money they have. Because that won't save them in the end. Now, Adam failed the test. But now Jesus has to pass the same test. We're more current now. We back up to date. We see Jesus having to pass the same test as Adam. <laughs> you don't get a new one. He get the same one. Look at Luke 4. Luke 4. Ooh, verse 1. See, this is why the, the church has been trying to be rich like the world instead of being rich based on the kingdom of heaven. Because there's so much more that the kingdom of heaven can give you than the world could ever give you. And you got to know that the world always have the string tied to it. And they can snatch it back from you anytime they get ready. You just look at what they're doing to those that come up and say, I'm pro-life. They're trying to destroy most of their ability to, to work in Hollywood. You must not be reading this stuff, what I'm reading. If you listen to regular news, they'll never tell you that. But they're trying to destroy different ones who's had good, and some of them just decide, I'm leaving Hollywood. Because I'm not going to give up what I believe. And I applaud those people that's doing that takes a strong character to walk away what you once depended on. Ooh, Jesus. But the kingdom of heaven has always been proven to be what? Stronger, more powerful. Now, Jesus has to pass the same test that Adam had to pass. Look at verse 1. 
and Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost, and Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost. And Jesus, see, God won't lead you into a test if you're not full of the Holy Ghost. He ain't going to do that. Now, you might walk into one because the devil got stuff set up. But God directs it. The Bible said the steps of a good man are ordered by who? God. So God knows that the devil got something set up for you. He pre-warns you if you're full of the Holy Ghost. Jesus didn't go into this temptation not knowing that temptation was there. Because he was full of the Holy Ghost. And the, and the Bible says he was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. So the Spirit of God told him to go into the wilderness. That tells me something. That Adam, because the Bible talks about Adam not being deceived. The woman was deceived, but Adam was not deceived. Didn't y'all read that in the Bible? So that tells me Adam had, in a, just like Jesus was led, Adam was being led by the Spirit of God who lived in him. He ignored the voice of God. That's why it's called high treason. Mm. Jesus was led into the wilderness by the Spirit of God, being 40 days tempted of the devil. And in those days he did eat nothing. And when they were ended, he afterward hungered. And the devil said unto him, If, if, two letters but a big word, if, if you be the Son of God. Now he's trying to get Jesus to use his authority illegally. Because who's giving him the order? You got it. He said, I only do what I hear, what I see my father do, and I only say what my father say. <laughs> Woo, Jesus. But the devil was trying to give him an order. So you got to know who's pushing your buttons. Mm. He says, if thou be the son of God, command this stone that it be made bread. And Jesus answered him saying, I'm not making up no story. I ain't got to talk to you like that. I'm going to tell you what the word said. The word says, it is written that man should not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. He says, don't, don't try to tip me because you think I'm hungry. I'm not needed like that. See, some people give up their righteousness for something to eat. You'll you sell your anointing for, some, for, for a banquet. <laughs> Esau proved that, didn't he? He lost the blessing of a bowl of beans. Can you imagine? See, that's because he didn't honor the, his position as being the firstborn. He didn't like it. Mm-hmm. Or he thought it was going to be like that all the time. And he could be what he wanted to be. And then at any moment he could get back in there and daddy was going to bless him. And it didn't work like that. Because mama had another plan. Watch this. Look at verse 5. And the devil taking him up into a high mountain showed unto him all the kingdoms. Say kingdoms. Of the world in a moment of time. And showed him all the ruling places of the world. There are some areas where the laws of religion rules extremely deep, deep, deep. And the devil said unto him, and we'll talk about that another time. I can't get into all that this morning. And the devil said unto him, all this power will I give thee and the glory of them. Whoa, 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 wait a minute. He says, wait a minute. I'm going to give you authority. Jesus, like this, Jesus need authority. See, because that's what, that's what Adam gave him. I'm going to give you authority because I got authority. That's what the devil saying to him. You can't give something you don't have. And in order to offer Jesus authority, he had to have it. But he had Adam's authority because God never gave the devil authority. That's why, you know, I get... I get just a little bit on edge when I hear people trying to make the devil opposite of God. He ain't nowhere in the class with God. He doesn't have any authority. He uses deception. And any authority he uses is yours. 
You gave it to him. Just like Adam. Adam surrendered his authority. God didn't give it to him. You got that? And then it says, and the glory. That means all the wealth that comes along with those territories. So I don't want to hear nothing about no broke Christians. Why would the devil offer? Because he's not offering Jesus an anointing. For all of y'all want to be spiritual. That word glory there means the wealth of all those kingdoms. Hmm. He ain't, he ain't offering Jesus no feeling. He asked, tell him, he said, he's trying to get him to surrender his dominion. Because then if, he, if Jesus surrendered, guess what he would have? Heaven. He would accomplish what he started out to do against God. I'm going to send myself. See, he always wanted to be over God. But he can't and never will be. For that, look what that scripture, look, look what it says. Read what it says at the end. And the glory of them, for that is what? Delivered unto me. Who delivered it to him? Adam did. And to whomsoever I will, I give it. And Jesus could not say he was wrong. Because he had usage of all the wealth that was in the earth. Verse 7. If thou therefore will worship me, all shall be thine. Just like he lied to Adam. He lying to Jesus because he can't tell his truth from here to the front door. He got to lie somewhere along the line. He said, all shall be thine. And Jesus answered and said unto him, get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shall thy serve. Because he's a servant. Jesus put him back in his place. You're a servant. You don't have no authority over me. You're a servant. Mm. All right, I'm going to close in just a moment here. Oh, I, I, I am so full of this. I'm going to tell you. See, the wealth of the earth had been locked up. Say locked. There's another key. There's another key. The wealth of the earth was locked up and held hostage by the devil. And he just told Jesus, I give it to whomever I want to give it to. But guess what Jesus did? Jesus unlocked it. And you got to walk into it and take it. It's not going to float in your lap. It ain't going to fall out the sky. You got to get involved in the economy. He says, see, the wealth of the earth had been locked up by Satan, only released to those who would sell out to him. This had to be difficult for Jesus to listen to. That's what the Lord told me. God, your father, still owns the earth. But your father's enemy is using it and everything that God had put into it for his children. That would be hard for Jesus to listen to. But he knew why he was sent. And he was going to pay the price to put the government of heaven back into the earth. So that once again, man will have dominion over the wealth of the earth. Ooh. Mm. This is why any church that teach poverty or endorse you having to struggle is from the kingdom of religion. It's from the pit of hell. Because Jesus didn't die for that. He died so you can get all the wealth that sent his earth back. Did you learn anything this morning? 
Come on, stand to your feet. Because I'm telling you, if, if we don't become kingdom-minded, then we're going to end up being whipped by the devil. And the things that's been placed here for you to use, he says in Ephesians, I've given you all things to richly enjoy, not struggle after, not got to have three jobs to get it. Everybody, the cat and the dog working in the house. No. He says, I've given it unto you to richly enjoy. But I got to exercise my dominion because I'm living in a two-government environment. And that other government is opposing the laws that I decree. And I decree the law that I am rich, that I flow in my inheritance. Now, when I say that, and I'm speaking into the atmosphere, my enemy says, oh, no, you can't have that. I know it's yours, but I don't want you to have it. So let me put a smoke screen up. I'm going to make your washing machine break down. You can have that car repairs because he's attacking your seed. So you have no seed to sow. And you take on the cares of life, which is against the government of heaven. Mm. Thank you, Lord, for truth. Oh, I'm falling in love with Jesus more and more and more. Falling in love with the Holy Spirit. Because of what Jesus did, I can choose life. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. And I choose to live. How about you? Well, it's time to tithe and give. Are you ready? Oh, thank you, Lord. Father, thank you for this great covenant called tithing and giving. It is a key to our prosperity financially. So we turn this key this morning. Now, Jesus, you are the high priest over the tithe and the offering. Therefore, we brought out the whole tithe. We have not demoted it in our hearts, neither have we transgressed against the tithe. We kept it holy, set aside for your use only. Now, we've also presented to you this morning the seed that you put in our hearts. So cheerfully, joyfully, and hilariously, we are sowing our seed because we know that you are the Lord of the harvest. You are the one that calls increase. So with great boldness, with this key called tithing and giving, we push against the spirit of poverty. We come against sickness. We come against disease. We come against lack because we got the key that unlocks it. It's called tithing and giving. And we believe that we receive now in Jesus' name. If you believe that, come on, let's tithe and give. Because we got supernatural expectation. If you would like to support Rapture Ministries with a financial gift, please visit us over at raptureministries.org and click the Give button to securely give through PayPal. If you're a local member, please remember to include your CID number and your giving breakdown. Thank you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. What an honor it is to know him. Now, if you don't know him as Savior and Lord, let us introduce him to you. If you're in this room and you're not sure, then this is a great time. Somebody next to you can help you because it's time for everybody to go to work. Amen. Somebody near you, tell them, say, help me. I want to be born again. I'm putting y'all to work in case you didn't know it. But if you're looking online and you don't know Jesus, what a great time to get to know him. Because the kingdom is functioning right now. The kingdom of heaven, religion taught you in the sweet by and by. Never swing, sing that song again. It's from the hell. Because the kingdom of, is already here. 
And you may never meet people that you think you're going to meet if you keep living the life you're living. And that's one that's been designed to deceive you, thinking that you have a relationship and fellowship with Jesus that you really don't have. But today you can, and it can be very, very real. Just ask him into your heart. Say, Jesus, I heard the word today. Holy Spirit, usher me into the presence of God because I yield to your word now. I accept what Jesus did. I accept his death. He died in my place. I accept his death. I accept his burial. I accept the resurrection. I believe that he rose from the dead and brought new life unto me, and I received that new life. Now, Holy Spirit, usher me into the presence of the Father so that I can now partake of all that is mine by inheritance. And I thank you. I thank you for cleansing me from all my sin and giving me brand new life. Now, Holy Spirit, fill me to overflow with your presence. The way I speak in tongues, I believe in tongues because that's how I build me up. And I thank you for it in Jesus' mighty name. Now, if you pray that prayer, you can decree and declare just like I can. But the key is to get out and to know the, the word. You need to belong to a good word church. If you don't, get hooked up to a good word church that teach the truth. If you're local, come on, hook up with us. You can listen as our announcer come. They will tell you all the ways that you can hook up with us as a church. Amen. God is doing great and wonderful things in our midst. Come on, let's get ready to receive the blessing. Well, you know, you got to get this. Yeah. Let's receive the blessing. God, you are the unfailing, unlimited <laughs> source of my supply. Lord, you have opened unto me your good treasure and blessed the work of my hands. You have commanded the blessing upon me. Therefore, I am blessed in the city. I am blessed in the field. I am blessed coming in. And I am blessed going out. My bank account, my investments, my health, my relationships, they all flourish. The blessings of the Lord overtake me in all areas of my life. Your favor goes before me and open doors unto me. I am divinely protected from the enemy. Now to him that is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God. Hallelujah. Our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Let the church say, remember the will of God for you is in earth as it is in heaven. God bless you. Have a great day. See you the next time. Thank you for watching today's broadcast. And we don't want you to miss when we go live again. So if you live in the United States, sign up for Rapture Go. Text Rapture to 757-780-4949. And we'll send you a text message every time we go live. If you live outside of the United States, then subscribe to our YouTube channel and like us on Facebook so you never miss one of our live broadcasts. We thank you for watching. God bless you.